our last stop here uh, from Kyrie Gregory. I think I said that right. Kyrie. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, can you guys discuss uh, about same day releases if there'll be a thing, and will there be a fall of movie theaters? Ugh. Um. Yes. I mean, Ugh. like currently, it, the, the you probably will get some movie theaters closing down. I mean. The, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like don't want to quote like uh, uh, Thanos. It's inevitable. There's gonna be closings because even when some of this blows over, a lot of people are not gonna go flack into the movie theaters exactly. like, really soon. I mean, and so, I actually and China, had... China's a perfect example of that. They reopen for a little bit. They average like a ticket a day. Yep. Like Shane, I talked about that today. Literally, I'm not going for the first three months. Like, no. I'm, there's no way you're gonna find me back in the theater that quick. Like, yeah, and like uh, even with the, the China thing, they tried to get people to go back to the movie theaters by like releasing a bunch of Avengers yeah, movies, yeah. Spider-Man movies. Yeah, and really anybody went. Well, so I think it was the um, the four Avengers, Avatar. Uh, I think yep. Inception was one of yeah, them. Yeah, yep. And I mean, just the idea of movie theaters future. Um, like your AMC, your Regal, those big chains, they're fine. Like the, 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 I'm saying, the, the, like, everything's fine. gonna get a bailout. Yeah, the smaller ones are gonna have a harder time. The problem is, people are gonna start getting used to watching more and more stuff at home, which is happening. And the industry, anyway. Um, I'll take you back to the last investors call with Disney, where Bob Iger said the time to delivery on video on demand and digital is shrinking to the point where it's almost going to become like negligible. It's like, oh, I didn't see it in theater. All right, five, six weeks, it's on demand and it's available. Like, it's getting to that point because there's so many blockbusters stacked on top of each other that, you know, your window shrinks to how many people you can reach. And sure, an Avengers will be in theaters for three months, right? Okay, yes, that, that happens. But again, Avengers Endgame was out on physical media when it was still in theaters. Like, yeah. that's... I mean, it is shrinking, and um, I think it's viable that starting a couple years from now, you'll probably see a pretty decent shift towards, like, digital delivery becoming a thing. Once HBO Max and Disney Plus and all that realize that we have enough subscribers to justify putting out a $150 million movie on our service, and if they want to pay 10 bucks extra to get it, you know, within a week, and they start making more of a profit, I think it's, I think it'll take well, here's over. here's the thing, like, they, they haven't, they haven't got to wait that long, they just literally put Onward on there right now. True. Yes, this is a slightly different circumstance, and that did have a theatrical release, and it was a very unfortunate timing, but that movie still cost between 175 million and 200 million dollars. Like, it's on there, like, you had a two-week like pay to view or 24 hour rental period or whatever it was and then it's on Disney Plus for free so they they already tried it out with that movie mm -hmm. whether it's done good or not we'll never know I know right. they said Birds of Prey got beaten up by Bloodshot and what is wrong with people uh... <laughs> but, but, but you're not going to hear about like Onward on Disney Plus here. Wait, right. wait, did, did you did actually all... just say Bloodshot beat Birds of Prey? It, it, yeah, it, it did yeah. What? Yeah. Yes, I did. All, we all the Bloodshot fans oh. bought so many copies. We well, haven't thing, like, watched that yet. Like, Birds of Prey admittedly did have a theatrical run beforehand. Bloodshot right. really kind of didn't. So people that were going to see Birds of Prey saw it anyway. Yeah. But the fact that no one kind of went, oh, I'll watch Birds of Prey. And it's like, oh, I'll watch Bloodshot instead. It's just like, oh, no. Like, maybe, we d maybe we deserve what's happening right now. Here's, wow. here's my thing like, um, <laughs> with the whole digital push, right? I mean, I know it's stupid. It is the dumbest thing I could say, but I just want to play devil's advocate. That's what I'm doing here. I don't support this decision, just so people can understand. What if they're like, well, we don't know when Black Widow can release. We don't know what to do. We're going to re-edit this thing into four 30-minute episodes oh, for Disney+. Plus. no, please, no, don't. I, I wouldn't do it, but... That's horrific. I could see that being... Because their content, they're going to... I mean, it's going to get stagnant. It's getting stag stagnant already. And come I was going to say, for the States, it's stagnant. For like Europe, well, m most of Europe, it's completely fresh. In the right. Part, but like, what if we get to August, September, and we're not seeing Falcon and Winter Soldier? 
you're going to need content. Do you just drop Black Widow on there before that and during that? Like, what would you do? And I, I saw somebody say, well, yeah, maybe they should cut up Black Widow into a series. I'm like, I don't no. want that. No. But if that's the way they have to do it to get people to stay on and deliver content, I, would, I wouldn't I would support it. But I'd be like, you know what? I understand why you're doing it. I would understand that business approach. Which, But why, why do that when you can just make a separate tier? Because making a separate tier is not difficult. That's exactly what I would do, though. It's separate really tier. not You make a separate tier. You, you undercut what everyone else is doing slightly. Yep. So you make it like thirteen dollars, and you go like right here. You can rent it for forty-eight hours. Here, I would undercut in the scummiest way possible, and it's not a sly. I wouldn't like put it against them, but I would go for the for the price of our competitors one month for twelve ninety-nine. Right now, you can watch Black Widow and Mulan on our, you know, like oh, I wouldn't premium tier. Here. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. bundle with that. That'd be separate. Oh, no, you know, separately. But, you know, you word it so it's like, oh, twelve ninety nine for this movie. Okay, so you're the same price as Netflix. Hmm. But I get this movie that's coming out the theaters. Like, that price, people might go, you know what? All right. Click. Like, it's it's a good price. Once you get to $20, I realize people are like, eh, maybe, maybe not. If you say 15 10 to 15 that's kind of an instant buy sometimes. Like, I've been like that with video games on PlayStation Plus. I'm like, this game's twenty bucks. Hell no, sixteen I mean, ninety nine. I'm like, done. <laughs> no, Blood, Bloodshot's buy and keep over here. I think it's, you, oh. you buy and keep it in the states as well. It's not actually a rental, but that, that's like fifteen, sixteen. Which and, is know, like, that's clearly been getting a lot. So, or I don't know if it's a lot, but it's something to get. Oh yeah, so Bloodshot is a uh, buy and keep over mm. here as well. Twenty bucks, huh? Mm. Okay. When it comes to movies, I've noticed at least in the states, twenty bucks or nineteen ninety nine. You don't add mm-hmm. that penny. Yeah. You don't add that penny, but nineteen ninety nine. That's what is like the yeah. That's good. That's a good price. If you were to put it like at twenty one, nah, nobody's gonna buy it. Yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> or even even putting it to that straight up twenty. I don't know why. I'm one of those people. I always will round up. Like when we do our like. Um, our money management and that our bookkeeping and stuff like that. Like for our personal stuff, I go I round up because I would rather overestimate how much we have spent for that month of allowance of for like food and stuff. But most people don't like doing that. They like to go under. Yeah. So if you sit there and you put the price of under twenty nineteen ninety nine. People are really happy about that. It's almost like how gas prices, like right now, our gas prices are two oh nine, but technically they are actually two ten because they're two oh nine and then nine yeah. tenths. Yeah, yeah, it's that weird. <laughs> it's that like you don't make a video game console five hundred, you make it four ninety nine ninety nine. Yep. It's just mm. it's that little thing. Um, yeah, it I might would... only be a penny, but. A penny. Uh, it, it's a really interesting conversation to have about a digital future. I think we're going to see it in the next two years, really, once everything trickles down from the theater shutdown and all that. I think we're going to see a uh, like cause and effect. I think yeah. it will be so, a Because, like, the, you know, the, the whole argument for day and date, like, I, I am on the start of day and date. Same. Like, yes, there's a lot of pushback against it, and I understand why. People will be like, oh, why do you want to kill the theaters? And it's like, well, I don't. I don't. People yeah. said you're going to kill bookstores when books went digital. Guess what's still knocking around? Right. People are going to say you're going to kill GameStop and Game when, when digital games came a thing. Guess what's still around? GameStop might last. It might not last. Mm-hmm. Last, but yeah, no, it's so killing itself. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah no, exactly. That's, they're doing this to themselves. Like yeah. GameStop's yeah. doing so, you it know, to itself. Like comics are day and date. You you get the digital version of that for free. Yep. The comic shops are still like the ones that we have are still around. You know, even now, you buy the digital f- during this whole thing, you get the physical when they start printing again. So, oh, that's cool. Like, like a lot of people yeah. are like scared that this is going to go away. Like, they won't. You no, know, giving people more options isn't going to kill the other one. Like, it's as simple as that. I, I could tell you, like, you know, from personal experience, it's like, look, if it's a big event movie, people want to go to the theater for that experience to experience in an IMAX exactly. or a big screen format. But if it's something like, like Bloodshot, I'll use that for example. If that would have been day and date digital, if this entire thing didn't happen, they're like, look, you can go to the theater, it has a release, but at home, 20 bucks, rent it for two days, 
Shay and I probably would have, actually, I guarantee you, we would have bought it for 20 bucks. Just been like, let's just sit at home and invite a couple of friends over and watch it. Mm. It would have, it, it's like, I don't need to see Bloodshot on a giant screen like I need to see in Avengers. But, the like, it, again, it's different, you know, industry, like, ways to approach giving money to the same industry. And I, I really just want them to understand that this isn't a problem. Like, again, to go back to video games, for example... Like, when it comes to piracy measures, right, you see companies going through hell and back to try to put the latest anti-piracy, like, on PC gaming currently, it's de novo. It can literally make your PC run, like, half of its full power while you're playing a game because it's constantly, like, cycling your CPUs and graphics card and it's killing performance. CD Projekt Red goes, we have no anti-piracy. You can literally get our entire game without piracy and their games and good old games, their service, which they own, skyrockets in sales because people want to support the the measure of not supporting these like ways of delivery that could possibly harm you or get in the way. Again, if you just talk to the people, be like, hey, look, we understand. Here's this new outlet. People will shift to it. Like it's, mm. it, it's just, it's always the people in the suits that don't even care about this making the decisions because they don't understand how the future has, you know, like, changed no. from 20 years ago. Like, but, like, at the same time, it's like, what's the logical endpoint of a streaming service? Why do they want a streaming service? It's so they can exactly. completely bypass any distribution method yep. and put it out there themselves. Yep. They, you, you put, you know, you put a movie on there, you charge 13 to 20, whatever you want to charge. You're not having to split that with anybody. That is purely all for you. Yeah. Yep. And kind of to go though back to like what Armin was saying when it comes to people wanting to gather, people also do love the food and things like that that are at the theaters. Like you have this like iconic almost taste. You can go to the store, yes, and buy a bag of movie theater popcorn. It doesn't taste like movie theater popcorn. Like our mm. local theater. Because of the fact that they they have all of this stock that they understand is possibly going to go bad by the time they're able to reopen again, that they did a curbside of the day and they literally made fresh popcorn for people. You can go pick up fresh popcorn and be able to still have that movie theater popcorn at home. And it was actually supporting still your local theater. So... People are still going to go to the theater mm. once everything is back to normal. But this is a way to allow some people... Imagine imagine this also. Our theater is an amazing theater that does sensory versions of films. They keep Sensory the, versions? Yep. Well, what it is is they keep the lights on. Yeah, you gotta explain. Um, that's what I was getting ready to do. They... <laughs> They keep the lights on, and they allow children um, to just walk around. Um, they don't have it as loud, and it allows it so that people don't have to feel like, oh gosh, I have to keep shushing my kid. It's so that other people can go and still enjoy it, and you could have like herds of kids just kind of running around doing their thing and be able to still watch the movie. Um, and it's very, very popular. And so that sounds really odd. I can't imagine that actually being a thing. But it, it is for here. little kids. I, I I see why they do it. It's like okay, that kind of makes mm. some yep. makes sense. And because like we'll go to the theater and we see people bringing newborn babies. Yeah. Into yep. the theater. Yep. That's an area that if you want to go and see this movie and you're afraid your newborn baby's going to start crying, you don't have to worry. You can go watch the movie. And there'll probably be about another 10 people there with newborn babies crying. Like, it's a way... It's almost like also the drive-in theaters. You just sit in your own car. You could be loud and obnoxious in your car and you're not affecting the people around you. That's kind of like what they allowed to do there. So when it comes to the digital aspect, people then don't have to worry, am I going to bother others? And also, because Mitch was saying about it, so I want to get the fact right... Um, let's say when it comes to like something like that, you know, the theater and all that, and they have the tickets and everything like Shay's talking about. 
Off a $20 DVD, the studio currently makes 60% profit. So off of $10, they make $6. So $30 brand new Blu-ray, you do the math, they're making six to seven bucks every 10. So they're making good. Digital delivery, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got some, again, I think they have to test out these numbers and look at them for themselves and be like, how viable is this? And I think I think we're going to get to that. It's, it's definitely coming. Also, also it's, uh, someone brought us up in our Facebook group, and they, they went about it the wrong way. Disney has no current revenue stream. They right. have Disney Plus, fair enough. Yep. They have no other outward revenue stream, and they are going to be hemorrhaging money. Admittedly, like, you know, they ha- how many Disney parks in the world? Is it three, four? Twelve. Really? Yep. I watch Disney Imagineering. There are 12 Disney parks, oh. mind you. Oh, see, I, I'm only episode two into that because that's what <laughs> yeah. started. Right? So it, it's an awesome series. But uh, there are 12 right. parks because in, like, Anaheim alone, there's technically three. Okay. Because Disney Adventureland... Disney World, Disneyland, uh, Animal Kingdom, those are technically different parks. Yeah. So in, Let's just say like the, the, the big ones, the, the big main ones. There's about, about six or seven big ones. Or, or if you want to say different states or countries, there's about six. Yeah. So like you you got California, you got Florida, you got Paris, you got Tokyo. Uh, yep. Um... Yeah, yeah, but like, I mean, you know, like, the point they, they is the revenue. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they cost like 3.4 stupid money a, a day to run. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Over the course of it, like it's going to take them about 18 months for each one to lose a billion, just from that alone, the way they operate. So if you like, stack up all that on top of each other, they're losing a lot right now. They've got mm-hmm. nothing to put out, and they've got massive movies. Like Mulan should have come out by now. That's not making anything. That's sitting yeah. on the shelf somewhere. Black Widow's such a kind of end of the month for me. Like That's sitting on the shelf somewhere right now. Like they Falcon and Winter Soldier isn't finished. They can edit everything they've done. They can't yeah. finish it to put it out because they had like a week of filming left to finish like three episodes. So that's going to be sitting on the shelf. They've got nothing new coming to Disney Plus. One Division might come out. Yeah. We don't know how. Like we know they finished filming. We don't know where they're currently at and what they can do at home. Honestly, they I can... think come like the beginning of summer. If we get to Ju- mid June and there's no new release dates, I think digital is the way they're going to just go. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they if they start losing people from Disney Plus, that's not great. Yeah. <laughs> like they're gonna have literally nothing coming in at that point. Mm-hmm. So what do you do to drive people there? Because I can like yes, people on the internet don't like the idea. The internet's a bubble. Yeah. Yeah. You put Black Widow out on that thing right now when people are being told to stay inside, you're gonna get people to stay inside for a couple of hours. And, and to prove a point for that you can downvote a Brie Larson car commercial all you want, but when the numbers came out, that car ended up actually getting boost for searches and sales because of Brie Larson. So just because you downvoted it to like a 90% dislike ratio did nothing in the grand scheme of things because people are like, oh, Captain Marvel car. Again, internet bubble versus reality. So again, and it's, I, like, yeah. it's like, it's like, you know, there's obviously contracts in place that movies kind of have to go out. There's nowhere to currently put them out. Like, yep. I, I, know, I know some movies are kind of like Wonder Woman went to August. I can't see things being fine by August. Same. And it's like, well, if everything's moving to next year, what do you do next year? Where do you put Black Widow next year? Do, is, you, is next, the question. next year, apparently, if everything's getting delayed there, we're literally going to be at the theaters with a blockbuster every weekend, two movies? Like, what? Exactly. And no one's going to do that. No. Nope. No one's going to want to go that quickly. So then your movie loses money, which is the main argument people have for put it on demand. Yep. Or on like, digital or whatever. So you're losing money regardless at this point. Why not try and get a little something 100% Instead of losing silly amounts by putting it out and having to split that last right. trick. For, no. no, I agree with all it, that. No, it, it, we're not in the current norm, and I don't think people understand that. Especially like pe- people like Forbes. Like Forbes had a really good article for why they shouldn't release it. They missed a lot of reasons that kind of point to you kind of maybe should. And here's right. the thing, though. Like, imagine if so, like for Black Widow, you put it out on digital. And we even talked about this last time. You put it out on digital. People have already bought it. They watched it. They loved it. The world is is spinning again, and people are are wanting to get back into the theaters. What do you do? 
you give it a weekend blockbuster release in theaters so the cosplayers can go and do their thing. You can go and enjoy it with other people. And say you only do it um, like their phantom events that they bring back old yeah. films. You mm -hmm. bring it in for a day or a weekend and be like, here, like we understand right. you already saw this possibly at home. Matt, what if they make it so that you can use your free ticket? You can use whatever I mean, and it, be it, able to again yeah you welcome back to the world here's that thing come back out community celebrate mm. make it a yeah. marvel event I think, I think, but I think when do work. you do that though that's the thing because there's a couple of things yep. with that it's a fantastic idea but if you look at re-releases re-releases don't make a lot of money no yeah like, like end game re-release admittedly that's probably too soon it's a really bad example it pushed it over the threshold for highest grossing of all time it didn't make a lot no, I didn't. So you're going to kind of get that with Black Widow on top of having this fear of being a crowd of people. Mm -hmm. So you've got these two things going against what is essentially is, is a really good idea. You, people would go to it, but you'd have to do that so far down the line when everyone's already seen it, everyone's already owned it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, by summer, I think we're going to have a clear picture on um, mm. by what would be Comic-Con we're going to know exactly what the status for the rest of the year is, theatrical releases, and digital more, because the next couple months will be interesting, and we're going to have a bigger you know, picture painted in front of us. And I think we'll revisit this conversation with a little bit of a different um, look at what's coming. Because like, we'll have a little more knowledge. Yeah. yeah. And just like my final point on everything, like I don't want to like, obviously bring up everything because we want to try and get away from what's going on right now yeah the way and I was, I, I, it's not political it's just how it's working right now the way america's handling this oh yeah <laughs> yep um it's a joke you're going to be lagging behind the rest yep. of the world like this is coming from somewhere in the uk who's not particularly handling it well yeah um but uh, you know we're better than sweden because they ain't doing nothing but um the longer it gets dragged out and, and no one locks down and no one's inside and you just can get more and more cases the longer this lasts which means the longer the period of time you have before exactly right. you can't release your movie out yep so like they the, the telltale sign for what that disney are currently doing is they haven't given it a date exactly yep. majority of people have gone this is our new flag you know look at sony they moved their movies forward a year and some into this year mm -hmm. which that's a Sony. But let's just bring this movie into October. Like that's if we, you know, everyone wants to go in October. Like who knows? But yeah. the, the longer America drags us out for, because that everything's American. Yeah, everything operates in America. Yep. Yeah, before, that home's America. The, so Hollywood, sitting, literally, exactly. So if theaters can't open in America, it's not going to be dropped anywhere. Yep. Exactly. Where can you drop it? You can drop it on demand. Yep. Yep. And exactly. at least that way, the world can have it. Like exactly. I. Here's here's my thing when it comes to Disney. If you start seeing Disney being like, we're pushing the button that now more and more countries have Disney Plus mm. quicker than they originally were going to announce it. That's well, how you can tell all these movies are going. They there. did move a few ahead of schedule. So. I was going to say they moved a lot of Europe's forward a week. They moved yep. India forward three weeks. Yep. So, so they're they're preparing in case you, they have to. You test the infrastructure now because what if come May fourth, Black Widow was supposed to be. What if that's your? You know, oh, let's announce it then for a couple weeks out. Again, I think they're playing. You know, they're playing chess right now, seeing what's going to be the victory move. Yeah. That, that's yeah. really how it goes. And also, like, like Comic Con, that's not going to go. That's not going to nope. happen. Nope. No. No. Like, 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 you know, America could get there. You know, pull the finger out the ass, the, the peak <laughs> and flat, peak and flat, and it can all go away magically, like Trump said. That's not. No one's gonna, five thousand people aren't going to pack into that thing. It doesn't. It also doesn't help the fact that it's now a substitute hospital or yeah. a makeshift hospital. Yep. So well, you can't get people out of Hall H because yeah. you've got all the sick people in there. So and I mean, yeah. Hall H is the IGN theater. Guess what IGN has said? They're not doing any of that. They're yep. not even... They they, for, they literally handed over the IGN theater to them to Vic. Here you go. Again, yep. a, a look at the world and just go, yeah, unrealistic. A lot of people right now are doing... like I think it's Wizard World. Um, I, may, I may be wrong on what comic convention is doing it. They're doing full virtual conventions right now. That's, that is um, really cool. They sat there and they're like, it's free. 
you can come in and try to do a QA. and a um, They're raffling off, like, signatures and things like that because they're wanting people to still have their experience. And we have a friend who has already done this. He has been doing virtual Comic-Cons for a couple years yeah, now. Yeah, it's smart, you know? like. Um, and he did it just because... It's a way that everybody all year round can sell their merchandise in a Comic-Con kind of setting. So mm -hmm. you can sit there and be like, I like this person, and like, here you go. And then you can see where they're going to go. And it's an amazing feature that now, I bet you everybody is like, he was already ahead of the curve. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, um, like I said... Give it till midsummer. We'll be back with an update, and I guarantee you we'll have a better outlook as to uh, what is coming down. So thank you for taking the time to watch that video. If you guys would like more content that we offer here for channel members, which you guys can check out on the little joint button down below, we do offer additional content, such as exclusive podcasts and topic discussions, our gaming podcast, Star Wars TV series reviews, Marvel show reviews, DC Universe, and CW reviews. We offer personal vlogs, backlog reviews of TV shows and movies, video game topics, and Q&As, and of course, in one of our best tiers, we offer audio commentaries on TV shows and movies, along with a bunch of other stuff you guys can check out just by clicking that join button and seeing what is on offer.